Welcome to episode nine of The Putting Couch, presented by the Seymour Putter Company's tour team. I am Jim. I'm here with Ted Galena. Today, Cody Hale, actually, I think he celebrated a huge win last night by <laughs> drinking too many vodka shots. I'm just kidding, Cody. He's completely forced today, and so he can't join us. But I can't say how thrilled I am and how excited I am to have our good friend Stephen Tiley on today from the UK coming off of a huge win yesterday on the European Challenge Tour. He's going to have to pronounce the name <laughs> since I don't speak French, but uh, so exciting. Wire to wire winner, beat out a couple of regular European Tour winners in Gregory Havre and Richard Bland. Stephen, so happy to have you on the podcast today. Welcome. Happy. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Welcome, Very Stephen. Happy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. And I don't think people, uh, I'm just going to let people know right now that, I mean, you are one of us. I mean, you're like one of my kids. We've known you, Ted and I have known you as long as we've been with Seymour. You're you're the most Seymour guy we've ever known. And, uh, you know, your your career, I think, is, uh, is going to be an inspiration to millions of golfers because, quite frankly, the millions of golfers that think they want to be professional golfers at the highest level. I mean, what you've done is pretty incredible, but it also shows – just how many peaks and valleys there are, Stephen. And, and I know, you know, 10 years ago, you actually won a tour event, okay, which was, uh, it's not an official challenge tour event because they had just designated it that year as a challenge tour event. So it was, I guess, going to become official the next year. Yeah. But that was in Egypt. And, and you beat Colin Montgomery and Rory McIlroy, among others. So to me, that was a real world win. And since that day, we've just, you know, we've talked every year. We've talked on a regular basis. We know how hard it is. But tell us, I mean, what, what's what's the journey been like? And tell us about the win yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a long journey. Um, and I've pretty much used the Seymour putter for, for pretty much most of it, which has been good. Um, a couple of guys, certainly in the last couple of weeks, have actually asked me, how long have you used that putter for? <laughs> and I have to, I have to recall like how long it, it's been 12 years I've been using that same putter. Like I saw every, the pictures. <laughs> I week. saw the pictures and I, yeah. I told somebody, I said, this is like it's one amazing. of the world's, yeah, it's like one of the world's <laughs> yeah. great surgeons who can't give up the scalpel because yeah, it probably <laughs> needs a new paint job, but way to it go. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's 07. The, the only I, I can actually, actually remember when I got the putter, but it was, the, the putter was made in 07. Yeah, which I found yeah. out like sort of earlier this year that the numbers on the putter and it was 07 at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's been 12 years, and I pretty much have used it. I've I've used it ever since. So uh, uh, we, we 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 appreciate it, but man, we're we're just uh, so excited for your story, Stephen. I know I know you and I talked this off season, and you 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 were doing a self assessment, and you said you know the game is 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 hey like many players that are known for their precision and for their short games. You said. It was becoming tougher and tougher to find golf courses that suited you. Um, but you said that you were going to just continue to put your focus on your strengths. And you had this amazing self-belief that you were going to win the way that you knew how to win, which was uh, which was taking advantage of your skills in the short game and not worrying about trying to hit it 300 plus yards. So how did that come to fruition? Yeah, um, yeah I think there's a couple of things. I mean, like we're, we're all creatures of, like sort of seeking perfection golfers always you know there's only the trouble is with golf is that there's only only one winner every week you know there's there's one guy that's going away from the tournament really happy and all the other guys are going away sort of reasonably uh, searching you know how do I win how do I get better and I, I just think every year every golfer that we every every golfer that plays the game at a really really high level always uh, are looking to things to improve at the end of the year and sort of it's very easy to focus on your weaknesses at the end of the year what do I need to get better what do I need to to get onto the European tour and win on the European tour and and with me it's always been sort of you know I need to hit it longer I need to you know when I was on tour we played some long golf courses and it's you know and the the rough was up so if I missed the fairway um, I was normally not being able to reach the green or hitting a long iron into greens and not being able to stop it near flags. So um, I, I think every year I always battle with myself in terms of 
you know, this off season, I'm going to get longer, right? This is it. And then I think I do that for a couple of months and realize actually, you know what? I'm missing fairways now. I'm not that much longer. It hasn't made much difference. And then I come across a few podcasts that I normally listen to. One of them being uh, Zach Johnson with Ed Milet. And he talks a lot about sort of um, improving your strengths. And um, he's always talking about, you know, what do we need to get better? Not what, what can I do to get better in terms of my strengths and uh, get my wedge play really good and, and just get my putting really good and just stuff that I can control. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a tough road. I think I, I finished yesterday. That was a course that suited me. It's quite tight. It's quite short. And I've been practicing my strengths leading up to it. And they were all sharp, ready to go. My putter was good. That was back. I've been struggling with that. And not terms of struggling, just not paying as, enough attention as what I should have been. I was paying attention to other parts of my game, trying to get them from a weakness up to being okay. And my strengths have just come off a little bit. So, um, and and I hold out extremely well. And I and I managed to win wire to wire, which uh, for my first win was incredible. Incredible. Um, yeah. And thank you. And I, I got off and it was, I was doing the interview and they said it was my 130th start. And I was like, you're joking. And they're like, no, you've played 130 times out here. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, that is a long, long, <laughs> it's, that seems like a lot of tournaments, uh, which it is. And it's been an incredible journey. Some weeks I've played well. Other weeks I've been soul searching. And it's tough, you know. We're, we're, we're going to places like Kazakhstan and China. And, you know, you missed a cut there. And you're just away from your family. And it, it, it's not all it's not all rainbows and uh, that everyone sort of imagines it is. So, um, but for moments like this, where you're driving back from France and you've got the trophy uh, strapped in the car next to you on the passenger seat, it's just uh, makes it all worthwhile. You know, it seems that way. It's, it's like, you know, I think most people would be, you know, winning the lottery one time in their lifetime, I think would, would, <laughs> you know, would suffice. And Stephen, for somebody yeah. who's just got the perseverance, I mean, you want to be a professional golfer and you compete at it and you work at it like, you know, nobody else. And you're yes. just a testament to what it takes. And I know you and I talk on a regular basis and it's just, it's incredible to watch this. And it's not that, yeah. uh, as I look at your resume, it's not that it hasn't had successes, but as you said, time gets away. I mean, the, the yeah. you know, the days of, of a guy coming out and winning five times in a major in his first two years, I mean, that's, that's one in a million, right? That happens yeah. occasionally. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. And and the more that you play, the more that I, you know, I was thinking I had very different emotions last week playing. And I thought, you know, you know, at 36, nearly 37, is there, is there many more times that you're going to get this opportunity where you've got like a three shot lead and, you know, you're, you're around a golf course that suits your game and you're playing well and everything's going well. You know, sometimes you've just got to seize the moment and, um, fortunately, I was uh, able to do that yesterday. So, uh, and, and that's an incredible thing right there. You, you mentioned wire to wire. And I think, you know, people that play the game, I mean, you came out and you blitzed the golf course on day one and you slept on the lead three nights. And just knowing that everybody's coming after you and that's really tough to do. I mean, players on the PGA Tour, you look at major championships, you look at PGA Tour, the closing rate uh, is very, very low for players that start off hot. So tell us about how that happened. Tell us about the incredible round to start and then sort of how your mindset changed each and every day. Yeah, um, well, I just come off like three missed cuts. So, I mean, it's just an incredible game in, in terms of, yeah, I mean, you're down in the dumps for three weeks. I missed the open by one shot. I mean, you're thinking you're driving up to the airport at, at 4 a.m. in the morning, uh, hardly any sleep, trying to get a, uh, a flight out to Slovakia at six o'clock in the morning. You just missed the open by one shot and you're thinking, you know, do, do I really need this uh, <laughs> anymore? You know, and then I, I went to Le Voudre. I practiced on my strengths at the weekend, missed the cut at Slovakia practiced on my strengths, got my track man out, started doing my track man test, um, got back on my chalk line, got back on 
um, you know, stuff like that, sort, sorted out my driving and, and went to Le Voudre, actually um, changed my driver shaft to like a, a straighter hitter driver. I've been actually um, struggling with my driving in terms of accuracy this year. Um, struggling with uh, a lot of spin. I need, I need quite a lot of spin with my driver and I've changed the new ball and, and just stuff like that and it hasn't been quite clicking. Um, but I changed my driver shaft and, and that seemed to be going really well and I was confident with that and just turned up to the golf course where I've, I I played. I finished second last year so had some good memories and just said, let's just go out there and play. Let's just go out there and just see what happens. Hit a few wedges close, hold some good putts um and and just sort of went out in five under and just um uh shot seven under the first day and tied for the lead and then went out the next day and i was obviously right come on let's not do anything stupid <laughs> let's not you know let's not miss the miss the weekend and okay. let's go out there and and build on that lead uh which is tough to do tough to go out the next the next day after shooting a low score is always hard to follow it up um, as all golfers know, um, obviously golf is just such a unique game where one day you could be seven under and the next day you could easy, quite easily be seven over easy. or five over. And, and there's no, there's no answer to it. It's, you know, it's one of those incredible mysteries. Um, and I just went out there and, and played well, the front nine, I think I shot one under the front nine, easy sort of, you know, golf, not, you know. I played the back nine, which is a harder nine of the two. And then I had the front nine, which was a few wedges. And um, I, th- I felt that I can score. Um, I made a few bad swings on the front nine, a bit nervy trying to get in and made a re- some really, really good saves. Uh, chipped in for par on one hole. And I th- actually thought, do you know what? This could be your way. You, you get a certain number of signs and you, you hear a number of golfers like feel it uh, when they win tournaments and they certain things go your way that normally don't where you chip in or you get up and down from an, an unbelievable spot or you, you see that, you know, you pull apart and it lips in rather than lips out. And a couple of, and that was happening on, on that back nine on the, on the Friday and I posted the number and then, uh, yeah. And then the next day, uh, woke up with the lead on the, on the, on the Saturday and maintained it. Ner- yeah. yeah, maintained it. A very nervy day. Very um, sort of, you know, let's let's keep this position. Let's, you know, let's let's sort of keep our lead for tomorrow, um, which I managed to do. Nice birdie up the last to get a three-shot lead. And then, um, yeah, slept on the lead again. I mean, that is inc- <laughs> it's It's so hard to um, to do. I mean, it was just incredibly uh draining both mentally and and sort of physically I, I didn't sleep that well you're not sleeping that well sleeping on the lead uh you wake up with a, a, a sick stomach you, you're not eating much you're not eating much during the day um and it's just yeah you just sort of get through it really so yeah Stephen this is Ted one Hi, Ted. on Saturday and Sunday going into the round in your mind do you do you still keep the hammer down or is it a little conservative i mean now that you've been in that situation and know that feeling i know it probably be a little bit better the next time you get in that position but what do you tell yourself i mean do i continue to fire at pins you know the guys behind you are probably doing the same way so what 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 was that feeling like to you um yeah, it was a strange feeling, really. You're constantly telling yourself you've got to go out and hit golf shots. I mean, I was, you know, a three-shot lead can absolutely go within a couple of holes, um, a couple of bad swings, and it's gone. Um, you know, a seven-shot lead, I think you're you're pretty much just hitting the middle of the green, two putting, and if you make a birdie, then that's great, and then you move on. I think a three-shot lead, you still got to play golf. Um, and the guys behind me, I knew they were going to play golf as well and they were going to try their, their best. So um, it was half and half, really. It was not not doing anything silly and in terms of firing at pins with, with a four iron and, and, and short-siding yourself. Um, but when the opportunity came and I had a wedge in my hand, I was still firing at pins and still trying to, trying to hold putts as well um, and not just 
just two part from 30 feet. Um, and it was a strange, last year I was four behind and it was just push, push, push. And you've got no time to get nervous. You've got to be like, I've got to go and get this guy. And if you shoot 67, great. If you shoot 72, then there's there's nothing gained. So it's, you know, but I had, I felt like I had not everything to lose, but I, I, felt, I felt like I had a lead to lose. And um, it, it's very, it's very nerve wracking uh, playing that way. And you've got to control your emotions uh, throughout the day, which uh, sometimes I didn't and sometimes I did. Um, so, yeah. Tell us about those last few holes. Um, yeah, um, it, it was quite a tough stretch, actually. Um, I think from 15, um, it's a tough hole. I think it's like 510 yard par four. Um, oh. So I hit a good drive down the middle. And then um, I hit, the, I mean, this was, I was getting a bit nervous. I was in between clubs where four iron, I had to hit a little four iron or a hard five iron. I chose a little four iron and I come out of it and hit it way right. I've, I've had a right miss actually uh, all year and it, it came at this time. <laughs> and it was, I was just thinking, I, I actually listened to a Jordan Spieth podcast uh, earlier in the week and he was talking about his Masters where he had that right miss. And I was thinking, you know, that's what I've got. Let's not. <laughs> and I, anyway, I thought about that for a split second and then um, sort of, uh, made bogey there and that was a tough hole but I actually I actually said that's you know if you're going to make bogey that's going to be the one you are going to make bogey coming in it's 15 was a tough hole 16 is a par three um, an eight iron pin that was at the front and I've absolutely flagged this thing I've um, I'm eyeing it up from about 160 yards um, and it's come up f about two yards short in the front trap gone in the front trap so I'm thinking oh, okay you know just don't be plugged in there I wasn't plugged splashed out and hold from five feet so that was a nervy part wow. um, coming back down the hill um, I'd hold out all well all week I think um, I miss six parts inside 10 feet all week so I was I was <laughs> I was holding out really well so so that was that was good um, 17 I hit a good drive and then in between clubs again but this is where next time under that experience uh, with the adrenaline uh, flowing, I would have picked the lower club and this time I actually picked the, picked the club that uh, the higher club, um, the longer club and it pitched by the pin, hit a great shot right by the pin about pitch about three feet away, one bounce and over the back, uh, like sort of in the semi rough, uh, not a very nice lie, little sort of, five yard chip down the hill so I was thinking oh come on just you know get this on the green somewhere inside 10 feet and we, we'll hold the putt and get out of here hit a decent chip to about four feet and I had four feet down the hill and it was pretty much straight maybe inside left and I was like right come on just hit the tee peg I putt to a tee peg um, when I'm putting and I was like just hit the tee peg hit the tee peg just saying that constantly over myself just over the ball and stuff and I've actually left this putt short from four feet. And I was like, oh my God, how have I left that short? And uh, I just said, you know what, just just put it down to nerves. And that actually helped, actually, it refocused me onto the last hole. Um, and I, I saw that Bland was at 10 under and I was at 11. So I had to par the last to win. So then that actually refocused my mind, missing that little putt. And I was like, right, you've actually got to play golf here. You can't. You can't just wing it down the last and, and make par or make bogey and, you know, and get in a playoff with it. We, you've got to play some golf. So I hit a really good drive down the last. Um, and then it got to a point where I was constantly just talking to myself, um, picked out a target on the tee and I was like, come on, hit that target, hit the target, hit the target. Uh, and sort of just kept on talking um, of, of, of everything that I wanted to do in terms of not wanting to do picking out targets, I laid up, hit a wedge to about, um, pitched about nine feet away and then spun back to 40 feet and oh. had, a, had a 40 footer up the hill, uh, two putts and I, I, I hit this putt and I thought, oh my God, that's short and I was like, go, go, go and then it got up there to literally a foot away 
and I marked him wow. and I was like, I think I think you're good from here. It was literally, <laughs> it was literally a foot away. So, um, and then it, I was just walking over to hit it in, and I just thought of when Tiger won the Masters earlier this year, and he had it looked like it was like four feet. And he literally walked up and just tapped it in. It looked like he was just like tapping it in on a on a on a friendly round with friends. And I was like, right, come on, this is like a foot away. You know, Tiger would just go out and tap that in, and and the rest is history. So I just went up and and tapped it in. So that was good. Oh, that is just that, that's I mean, awesome. It's making my yeah. stomach just get <laughs> nervous just listening to it. I, I just I cannot yeah. imagine. Thank you. For taking us through that, we're listening. That's right. uh, we're listening to Stephen Tiley, a great friend of Seymour. Uh, this is the Putting Couch presented by the Seymour Putter Company's tour team. Stephen Tiley won yesterday at the La Boudre uh, Challenge on the European Challenge Tour, and uh, really fulfilled uh, another one of your one of your goals, one of your dreams. I know you've won before. Again, your your background here. Um, people are listening from around the world. You, you, you played English junior golf, and then. You went to college in America, Georgia State. Um, you played U.S. college golf there, and uh, you've been on the European Tour, the Asian Tour, the Challenge Tour. Um, you led the Open yeah. at St. Andrews after the first round in 2010. So, I mean, it's 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 incredible to see where you've been. You've been a runner-up four times on the Challenge Tour before winning yesterday, and you've you've had a, a top 26 finish at the Open Championship in 2013 in Muirfield. So. Um, it's it's just it's up and down it's peaks and valleys but it's just this amazing self belief that you've had to stick with it and stay positive and wow I mean to have to go through the mental pressure you went through I feel like this is possibly going to unlock some of your yeah. your, your great potential Stephen and, and and I hope we see you win many more times and uh, and you use this as a springboard and thank uh, you. You know, tell us a little bit about the Seymour Potter. I mean, you know, we we just you you've been so associated with us. I mean, it's it's sort of Payne Stewart, Zach Johnson, and Stephen Tiley around here, and we we really appreciate okay. that. Yeah. And uh, you're you're in you're our wall. you're in our wall of champions. And thank uh, you, thanks. It's, yeah, we no, love that. But yeah, tell us a little bit about your experience and with Pat O'Brien and with our team here. And you know, you're a guy that's very cerebral. And as you said, you you've had you know you have to be better than everybody else when it comes to the short game. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just picked up a Seymour. Uh, it was in a shop, uh, a golf shop uh, in, in Surrey. And I was um, sort of picked it up. And I think with like every new putter, you, you hold the first couple of putts with it um, from, from 20 feet. Like every every new putter that you have. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll t- I take this. And off I went. And I think the first tournament... Um, I think I hold a 40 footer on the last to win uh, with a good friend of mine in, in a in a team competition, and um, yeah, uh, from that from that day on, I, I just used it and and haven't looked back. I just like every day. Um, I think the main the main difference that I feel with Seymour, um, which is such a positive, is that every day I feel like I set up the same, and I aim the putter. Uh, pretty much the same. Um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of times when if I've used a, a Newport style before I used uh, Seymour, um, my forward press was was very different each day, and I think that can that can have a, a an impact on setup. Um, and I I just like the way that I put it down, and um, you know if I, I hide the red dot, I know that the putter's set up um, um, square. So I just go with that and and take that take that out of the equation. Uh, as long as I know that it's set up square, if I'm not starting online, then then it's something to do with my path. Um, and then it comes down to pace, really. Um, if I'm not holding putts, then um, how's my pace? So um, there's only a couple of things to work on. Um, pretty much set up is taken care of with the with the unique rifle scope technology, which is great. Um, and, th- and then that's it, really. So, yeah, um, I- I've been using Cameron McCormack's, um, which is a golf stat lab uh, for the last couple of weeks. And that gives you strokes, gain, sort of putting and stuff like that. And I just noticed that sort of inside 10 feet, my holding out wasn't 
um, as good as what it has been in the past. So I was working on that, went back to a short line and just focused on that this week. So um, that was it. Yeah. So we'll keep doing that for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if I, I'm, I'm, you know, if I don't putt well, um, I'm not going to be competing. It's, it's as simple as that, you know, uh, very much like, you know, like Zach Johnson, I, I listen to a lot of his stuff and, and pay a lot of attention to to him and um, and what he's doing. And he, he talks about in his podcast about the three things that he has to do well to compete, um, driving accuracy and his wedge game and his putting. And uh, pretty much the same, um, yep. pretty much. Um, and Zach's just a, a, a highly refined model of myself. Um and maybe he's, um, you know, he's he's a little, he's he's definitely uh, really, really, like really well mentally. Um, he's mentally a lot, a lot better than I probably am. Um, competitive, and he he probably believes in himself a little bit more, and that's why he's reached the the heights that he has, um, and and probably stuck to it a little bit more to his game plan where he's, he's turned up to these courses on the PGA tour and a little bit more better at accepting, okay, maybe I'm not going to win this week or, you know, chances are I'm, I'm struggling to beat Dustin and those guys and Brooks, but do you know what? I'm going to grind it out and get as high as I can. Whereas myself has probably get down a little bit more if I've played those long courses and, and, and sort of tried to change, change the world as it were. Hey, I think this has just been the first chapter for you. As, as crazy as it's been, as long and arduous and up and down, you're, old, you're 36 years young. You're continuing to learn new things and about yourself. And I, I think, you know, there's an awful lot of golfers. I mean, really, you're right in the sweet spot, Stephen, as, as far as I believe. And, uh, you know, I know it's, it's going to be, you know, I, I guess, you know, what, what your goals are going to be moving forward from here. Um, you know, I guess real short term, hey, big celebration parade back home you don't have to worry about family life or going and playing another event this week right or am i wrong uh no, uh, yes it's just been a short yeah yeah, yeah. i've just got i've just got the children behind me so. <laughs> <laughs> they've all come in there we go yeah, i mean mum's coming back from work so. um yeah uh, sorry about that Oh, no, not only do you have to be the best player in the world yesterday or one of them, you have to come home. Uh, you have to drive back to back to uh, the UK today and, and, and be a dad and, and, uh, and, a, and a husband and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then back up and head off again, huh? Yeah, straight back on daddy daycare today. I was uh, <laughs> looking after my four year old son and. You know, he, he, he doesn't care what I did yesterday. He's just worried yeah. about, yeah. you know, whether he's going to get a toy or whether he's going to get an ice cream. I mean, that's, that's as much as it, it gets for him. So, well, uh, or what, what, or what show he's watching on TV normally. So, um, but yeah, um, going back to your question. Yeah. Um, celebration, just, um, I'm going out for a dinner in a, in a minute, uh, with the family, just a, just a, uh, a low key, so like, like sort of family dinner, and then I'm straight back on a flight tomorrow, um, eight o'clock in the morning. So, um, yeah, to Austria. So oh, that's straight awesome. back playing, um, and um, yeah, straight back on the chalk line. I think that's, so, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, would you join us again sometime, Stephen? If we could do this Absolutely. again down the road, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. Hey, we we so appreciate it. I hate to steal any time in this really special day for you, the winner of the 2019 La Voudre, uh Challenge Tour event and a uh, huge win and uh, for you personally. And, and uh, I, I know it's just there's nothing like winning and holding that trophy. So we appreciate your time. Steve and Tyler has been a great friend to Seymour, always will be. This is the Putting Couch brought to you by the Seymour Putter Company's tour team, Jim, Ted, Cody, and today, Steve and Tyler. Steven, go Thanks, get them. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. I'd just like to uh, appreciate everything you've done for me and the support that you've given me and uh, I can't wait to come over back to Tennessee and, and visit the studio soon. Well, hey, That'd that's going to be awesome. Can't wait. All right. Yeah. Go have some fun okay. tonight. All right. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Stephen. Congrats Thanks, again. Thanks. Safe Stephen. travels. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks very much. Bye. 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 We appreciate you joining us. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do wherever you're listening. 
Be sure to leave a rating and review because that's how we get the Putting Couch Podcast content in front of more people. Also, take a screenshot and share it on social media and tag us at Seymour Putters or hashtag Team Seymour.